afternoon, everyone. I also would like to thank Dr. Lala Long for hosting this series and inviting me to participate with such an esteemed group of speakers. Dr. Kwon let me know that a former student of the class said that they loved this class because it helped them learn aspects of culture they never thought about. And now, with the support of the Eurasia Foundation from Asia, our students will learn firsthand from esteemed scholars about one of the most important regions in our world. This is a fantastic opportunity for our students and our community. It's fair to say that UCF is influencing the future of the United States. Our university ranks among the top 20 most innovative universities in the nation. We are leaders in educating a workforce for Florida's booming space, hospitality, and entertainment industries. Our largest disciplines by enrollment are business administration, health professions, psychology, engineering, and visual and performing arts. We are among the largest universities in the country. We have issued a whopping 400,000 degrees since we were founded in 1968. And uh, nearly 90,000 of those were just in the last five years. What if we were issuing those degrees and feeding these critical industries with people who had no cultural understanding of the world around them? No matter what career path UCF students choose, exposure to humanities is important for their individual growth. Studying the humanities leads to what some people call soft skills, but I call them core skills, because I don't know how you live your life without them. They are things like empathy, cultural relativisms, and interconnectedness. Reading literature, studying art, and delving into the philosophy of different cultures helps us develop empathy by allowing us to see the world through the eyes of others, leading to a better understanding of diverse perspectives and experiences. By exploring art, literature, religion, and other aspects of different societies, we can see how cultures have influenced each other and contributed to the broader human experience. It develops understanding that each culture should be understood and evaluated within its own context, rather than being judged by the standards of another culture. This promotes tolerance and reduces ethnocentrism. We see great personal outcomes from people who have worked to increase their core skills. The contextualization of history helps them grasp cultural practices, beliefs, and values. They have a richer understanding of the complexities of the human identity and the significance of representation. It prevents the loss of valuable cultural artifacts and practices. Cultural adaptation is important, too, because as societies become more diverse and multicultural, understanding various cultural norms and practices become vital for a peaceful coexistence. Not just for that, but also for navigating life in general. A few years ago, I had a student from Hong Kong, Calvin Chu, who's a percussion major. I'm a percussion professor. I teach percussion. We do a, a first week class like we're doing uh, now, where we're doing overviews. There's a lot of complicated material that we're covering. And I knew there was a language barrier, too. So I was covering this stuff rather quickly because we didn't have a lot of time. And usually what happens is at the end of that, the freshmen come up to you and, what did you mean by this? And is this due tomorrow? And what do I got? And there's a lot of questions. Calvin just got up and walked out of the room. And I was like, wow, maybe Calvin understood this. Well, I checked in with him the next day. I said, Calvin, did you understand everything I was talking about, the listening cards and these assignments that we were talking about? And he said, no. And I said, well, okay, let me show you. And I got on web courses and showed him how everything worked. And I said, why didn't you come to me after class and ask? He said, that would have been disrespectful. I said, why disrespectful? He said, you're the teacher. If I didn't understand, that was my problem, not yours. And that was a cultural difference in Hong Kong. It was considered disrespectful in their educational culture to do that. And I said, well, you don't have to worry about that here. I'm used to being misunderstood, so please come to me <laughs> and ask me questions and follow up. But it was good. Uh, a, a good opportunity for both of us to sort of learn and, and to pick up on the different cultures that we were uh, intersecting with here. So, besides the individual benefits, there's societal benefits to studying the humanities, what we're going to do today and part of the series. An informed society reaps benefits that contribute to its overall well-being, progress, and stability. An informed society is better equipped to address challenges, make sound decisions, and contribute to the overall well-being and progress of its members. It's a foundation for not just prosperous, but a democratic society. People tend to be more effective decision makers, whether it's voting for political leaders, supporting policies, 
or making consumer choices, an informed society makes decisions based on knowledge rather than misinformation. They're better at that when they base it on knowledge than misinformation. They're more likely to actively engage in civic activities such as voting, community organizing, and advocating for social change, leading to more effective and representative governance. They're better equipped to understand complex societal issues, which can prevent conflicts and promote social stability. Informed individuals are more likely to engage in constructive dialogue and seek peaceful resolutions to problems. An informed workforce is crucial for economic growth. Access to quality education and information ensures that individuals can acquire the skills needed to contribute to the, econ to the economy effectively. Informed, co informed consumers also make better economic decisions, leading to a more efficient marketplace. Informed citizens are more likely to support and advocate for policies and practices that protect the environment. People are more likely to demand transparency from their institutions, governments, and businesses, which fosters accountability and reduces the likelihood of corruption and abuse of power. This is why the humanities and study of humanities is so important. A society that values and prioritizes education and information dissemination creates an environment that supports educational excellence. That in turn produces skilled and knowledgeable individuals who contribute to various sectors of society. An informed society values and supports quality journalism, which serves as a watchdog for democracy, informs the public, and holds institutions accountable. Access to information empowers individuals by giving them the tools they need to take control of their lives and make positive changes. Being able to evaluate the source of that information is critical. That will help you determine what is misinformation and what is information that you can trust and rely on. The individuals benefit, society benefits, industry benefits. It's not just about improving your personal uh, skills or benefiting society as a whole. Cultural understanding significantly affects professional outcomes, benefiting organizations that hire people who have studied the humanities. Humanity subjects often require critical analysis, interpretation, and evaluation of complex texts and ideas. These skills not only enhance one's ability to understand cultures, but also foster critical thinking and a capacity to engage with complex issues. You know, I, I studied music my whole life, and as a percussionist, I took a lot of drum lessons. Now I lead a college. I'm thankful to my humanities classes that helped me do this, because I'm working with people, and trying to help them, and serve them, and understanding them is a big component of that. I thought my business was always going to be music. It still is a part of it, but it's not all of it. Many humanities disciplines explore ethical questions and moral dilemmas that societies have faced throughout history. Having employees who understand the ethical dimensions of different cultures and societies can save countless hours, dollars, and even reputations. Informed societies are more likely to foster innovation and technological advancements. When people have access to knowledge and information, they can build upon existing ideas and develop new solutions to challenges. And informed individuals are more likely to make healthier lifestyle choices and seek medical care when needed, and stay informed about health risks and preventative measures, which reduces organization costs. We have a global economy. Doing international business requires understanding different cultures for effective communication, cooperation, and diplomacy. In essence, exposure to the humanities fosters a deeper appreciation for the diversity of human experiences builds a stronger society, and equips industries with a stronger workforce. Now that we've established why we want to build culturally educated, uh, a culturally educated society, what is UCF doing about that? In addition to offering humanities and language education, which apparently you're not going to be able to find at every university coming up, UCF is involved in various initi uh, initiatives and programs to serve a global, uh, global community. UCF is actively engaged in global partnerships and collaborations with institutions around the world. These partnerships include academic exchanges, joint research projects, and cultural exchanges that contribute to a more interconnected global community. Study abroad programs are always a great way to start building a global citizenry. UCF offers a range of study abroad programs that allow students to immerse themselves in different cultures and educational systems. I'm pleased to say that just this summer, one of our faculty members led UCF's first abroad program to Azure Bichon. Dr. Guang, a Fulbright alumna, has sent our students to Japan, South Korea, and China on prestigious awards such as JET and a Fulbright English teaching grant. 
and works closely with UCF Global to create new study programs in Asia. I hope many of you will consider taking advantage of it. Research is one of the university's primary products. UCF researchers have been involved in projects that address global challenges such as sustainability, public health, technology, innovation, and more. These research efforts contribute to solutions that benefit not only local community, but also the global population. Research in the arts and humanities, in this case, connects people from around the world through artistic and creative collaboration. Our faculty is recognized internationally for their achievements in the field of music, graphic design, literature, just to name a few. Cultural exchanges and performances are campus highlights. For instance, we have dancers from the Democratic Republic of the Congo and the Ukrainian National Ballet perform on campus last fall. UCF Global also collaborates with our arts and humanities faculty and students during their annual International Week events, so I hope you'll be on the lookout for International Week. Of course, there are many other initiatives the university is undertaking, including diversity and inclusion initiatives, participating in international conferences and forums, and a big one, global access via online learning. Not everything we do <clears throat> is within the physical or digital walls of UCF. UCF has long been known as the partnership university, and those partnerships have no borders. At UCF, we facilitate meaningful interactions with and collaborate with external organizations through collaborative workshops and seminars, joint research projects, collaborative grant applications, joint publications and reports, virtual collaborations, and more, including guest speaker series like the one you're experiencing now or about to. By adopting a multifaceted approach that includes formal and interformal interactions, UCF can foster an environment open dialogue, mutual respect, and collaborative innovation with external organizations. The key is to identify areas of shared interest and create opportunities for meaningful engagement that benefits both parties and contributes uh, to addressing our global challenges. Dr. Kwong, I'm so grateful that you've coordinated this series, and again, thank you for including me. I especially appreciate that this series is being recorded uh, because it it isn't only our students who can benefit from hearing from the speakers. I hope that the leaders we, uh, we will hear from this semester can also share their videos, these videos with their institutions, their students, so people can gain from these important <coughs> talks. And because they will be publicly available, the talks uh, this semester will be a public asset that will help us build a stronger and more culturally aware society. <laughs>